Assalamu alaikum YouTube viewers. Today in this video, I am going to describe another property for Hermitian operator. So, as you can see that eigen functions of a Hermitian operator corresponding to different eigenvalues are orthogonal. We are going to prove this statement that the eigen functions of a Hermitian, a Hermitian operator, okay, those eigenfunctions of a Hermitian operator that have a different eigenvalue are orthogonal to each other. Okay, let me describe this by an example. Just take psi1 and psi2 be two eigenfunction. Okay, we have taken psi1 and psi2 be two eigenfunctions of a Hermitian operator A. Now A is a Hermitian operator and psi1 and psi2 are my two eigenfunctions. And after applying the operator on either of this, I get a value. Uh, a1 uh, as an eigenvalue for psi1 and a2 as an eigenvalue for psi2. Let me describe this completely. First of all, you need to know the equation for the Hermitian operator. Now, as you know that the condition for the Hermitian operator says that if I have an integration from minus infinity to positive infinity psi1 into a psi2 d tau and I have a hysteric sign on psi 1 here okay this one is the size complex and now from negative infinity to positive infinity i have psi 2 gets out of the bracket and operator a is being applied on psi 1 and here comes the sign for the conjugate okay so now what my hermitian operator says that if my operator a is applied on psi 2 wave function okay and the answer of this part should be equal to if my operator a is applied on psi 1 hysteric okay so this is the condition for operator of uh, this is the condition for hermitian operator that should be fulfilled so the next thing that you know that after applying the operator a on psi 2 okay after applying the operator a on psi 2 if my operator a is applied operator a is applied on psi 2 i get an answer equal to a2 psi 2 okay my after applying operator a on psi 2 i get an answer equal to a2 psi 2 and applying the operator a on psi 1 i get an answer equal to operator a on psi 1 i get an answer equal to a1 psi 1 okay let's just call it equation number 1 okay and let's just uh, let's just call it equation number 2 since it has a psi 2 here and call it equation number 1 since it has a psi 1 here okay so uh, you as you can see that my condition for orthogonality first of all write me the condition of orthogonality the condition of orthogonality says that from that integration of psi 1 uh, hysteric psi 2 d tau should be equal to 0 okay the integration of psi 1 hysteric psi 2 d tau should be equal to 0 and the other thing by condition of orthogonality says is if my hysteric is on psi 2 instead of psi 1 then the answer should also be equal to 0 so what you need to do is to prove that if my a1 here and a if my a2 here and a1 here are different okay if my a1 and a2 are different then psi1 and psi2 should also be orthogonal to each other okay if my a1 and a2 different are different then psi1 and psi2 should be orthogonal to each other okay so this is what i have to prove now so take equation number 1 okay taking equation number one so now i have to take equation number one on taking equation number one equation number one says a a operator on psi one gives out a one psi one so next thing that you need to do is multiply this equation number one with psi to hysteric and integrate okay you have to multiply this equation with psi to hysteric so here i am going to multiply with psi to hysteric and operator a on psi one and i have to integrate okay so uh, what i need to do is do the same on the right uh, right hand side of the equation so doing the same on the right hand side of the equation here comes the operator uh, a uh, here comes a1 and psi1 d tau and here is d tau this a1 is the eigenvalue that i get after applying the operator a on psi1 i get an eigenvalue of a1 and the operator psi1 is being repeated okay so the next thing that you need to do is as you know that a1 is a constant value so it will go out of the integration here a1 comes out of the integration the rest part of the equation is just the same psi2 psi1 
the tau okay so the next the left hand side of the equation is just the same since we have not done any change on the left hand side of the equation so it is just the same a1 psi1 d tau okay so the next thing that you need to do is as you know that a here is a hermitian operator okay as you know that a here is a hermitian operator so since a is hermitian so i can say that psi 2 hysteric okay integration over psi 2 hysteric operator on psi 1 d tau should be equal okay as you know the condition for the hermitian operator that if my a is applied on psi 2 okay if my a is applied on uh, psi 2 then the next the answer should be equal if my operator is applied on psi 1 okay so similarly if my operator a is applied on psi 1 then my answer should be equal to if my operator a is applied on psi 2 okay so this is my condition for Hermitian operator. So fulfill the, uh, so here A since A was our Hermitian operator, so I fulfilled the condition for Hermitian operator. So the next thing that you need to do is just plug in the value of A psi 2. As you know that the value of A psi 2 is A to psi 2. Okay, after applying the operator A on psi 2, I get an answer equal to A to psi 2. So after applying operator on psi 2, I get an answer equal to A to psi 2. So I just need to plug in the value that says A psi 2 is equal to A to psi 2 hysteric d tau okay the left hand side of the equation is a psi 2 operator a being applied on psi 1 d tau okay so the next thing that uh, we are going to do is taking a2 hysteric out of the integration okay a2 hysteric goes out of the integration the rest part of the equation is just the same a psi 1 psi 2 hysteric d tau as you know that in the previous property we have learned that a2 that the eigenvalue is a real value so this hysteric can be neglected okay the hysteric means conjugate and conjugate means that if i have a value with iota okay uh, do you know what is conjugate if i have a question i can say that if i have a equal to a plus b iota okay if i have a some value a equal to a plus b iota then its conjugate should be equal to a minus b iota okay the conjugate a hysteric should be equal to a minus b iota okay since a here is not a imaginary value so it not it does not contain iota in it okay since this a2 here does not contain iota in it it is just a real value okay it is just a real value it can be any value but it is a real value a2 here is a real value so its conjugate cannot contain a minus sign its conjugate will also be equal to a a2 okay its conjugate will also be equal to a2 since a2 does not contain any imaginary factor since a2 does not contain iota okay if i2 had contained iota if I, there was iota in a, a2 then its conjugate would be changed but my a2 doesn't have no iota in it my a2 has no iota in it so its conjugate will be the same as that of the uh, without conjugate so I can say that A2 hysteric can be changed with A2. So A2 hysteric can be changed with A2 since A2 is a real value and it does not contain any imaginary factor. So here comes psi hysteric d tau. So the left hand side of the equation is psi 2 hysteric A psi 1 d tau. So this was equation number 1, this was equation number 2, two and this is equation number 3 and this is my equation number so now if I compare equation number 3 and equation number 4 as you can see the left hand side of the equation number 3 and the left hand side of the equation number 4 are equal so I can take the right hand side of both the equation to be equal okay so the left hand so the right hand side of the both of these equation becomes equal so writing the right hand side of the both of the first of all I will write since LHS left hand side of both equations is equal so i can write the right hand sides of these equations to be equal so the right hand side of this equation says a1 psi 2 hysteric psi 1 d tau should be equal to a2 psi 1 psi 2 hysteric d tau okay this part taking this part on the left hand side of the equation uh, the equation becomes a1 psi 2 hysteric 
साइ वन डी टाओ माइनस ए टू साइ वन साइ टू हिस्टेरिक डी टाओ इज इक्वल टू जीरो सिंस दिस पार्ट एंड दिस पार्ट इज सेम वी कैन टेक कॉमन सो ऑन टेकिंग कॉमन आई गेट एन आंसर ए वन माइनस ए टू इंटू ब्रैकेट इंटीग्रेशन साइ टू हिस्टेरिक साइ वन डी टाओ is equal to zero so as you can see that this whole equation is equal to zero and in the given part you know that a1 is not equal to a2 okay the a1 is not equal to a2 as you know in the question here that in the given part we have different eigen value eigen functions of a hermitian operator corresponding to different eigen value we have been told that these have that these eigen values are different this a1 and a2 are different so if a1 and a2 are different then a1 is not equal to a2 and if a1 is not equal to a2 then a1 minus a2 cannot be equal to 0 okay if a1 is not equal to a2 then a1 minus i a2 cannot be equal to 0 so this part of the equation cannot be equal to 0 so only this part can be equal to 0 okay since this part of the equation cannot be equal to 0 so this part should be equal to 0 so that on multiplying this part by this part i get an answer equal to 0 So I can say that if my a one is not equal to a two, then psi two hysteric and psi one d tau is equal to zero. Okay, since this part is not equal to zero, so this part should be equal to zero in order to get an answer equal to zero. And this is what my condition of orthogonality says that from psi one psi two hysteric d tau should be equal to zero. So here is my condition of orthogonality fulfilled. Okay, so in case if I get an answer where a one is equal to a two, okay, here when a one is not equal to a two, the psi one and psi two are orthogonal. Okay. So when my a one is equal to a two, in case when my a one is equal to a two, then this part of the equation becomes equal to zero. Then this part may or may not be equal to zero. So I can say that uh, this part may or may not be equal to zero means that psi one and psi two hysteric. Okay, psi one and psi two hysteric here was also hysteric. Psi one and psi two hysteric may be orthogonal. Okay, be because we do not know. Whether they are orthogonal or not, as the as a one uh, becomes equal to a two, this part becomes equal to zero, and this part can or cannot be equal to zero. We cannot perfectly say that these uh, these wave functions are orthogonal or not. So I can say that psi one and psi two may be orthogonal. But in case when a one is not equal to a two, then psi two hysteric psi one should be equal to zero, which says that psi one and psi two hysteric are orthogonal. So this was our today's video. Inshallah, see you in the next video.